Hello all. A week or so ago, I put out a new version of PyDOS on GitHub that supports Espresso's ESP32 S2 chips. So I figured I should put out a video demonstrating what those chips can do. While working on the update, I did pick up the Arduino Nano Connect again. And before we dive into the Espresso boards, let's go ahead and start there. Well, the Nano RP2040 Connect is basically an RP2040 with a Wi-Fi module attached to it via SPI. Um, if we bring up the, the sample code that Adafruit had provided for accessing the module, you can see that they're using their ESP32 SPI library. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, it doesn't appear that it's actually the an expressive ESP32 chip. It's a U-Block Nina W102 module. Now, I don't know much about that. I assume that it's similar to the expressive ESP32, if not a clone or compatible, a compatible chip of some sort. But let's see, if I reboot this code, you can see that you can't see anything. Auto reload, let's see if I reboot. There we go. Uh, the header from the firmware indicates that this is version 7.00, so it's not quite the latest build of CircuitPython, but it's for the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. And if we start up PyDOS, uh, we can see Connect Wi-Fi. We'll go out and grab a little bit of text from one of Adafruit's sites and confirm the Wi-Fi connection is successfully working. Um, I think, let's see, let's just see what other Connect specific files we've got here. We've got uh, Connect Rainbow, and we should, should see the NeoPexo changing between colors. I don't know how well the colors are coming out on the camera, but uh, they, it's color shifting there for us. So some of you might remember I started playing with this board a little bit, uh, and then I had a bit of a problem where I tore off the USB connector on it. Uh, Arduino kindly sent me a replacement, but uh, in the meanwhile, I did stumble across uh, another board which caught my attention, uh, which was the tiny Pico board from Unexpected Maker. So this is a screen pointing out the features of the tiny Pico. Obviously the big feature they have is the ESP32 chip, which has Wi-Fi capabilities. But the other thing that caught my eye was four megabytes of PS RAM. And when I ordered this, I wasn't, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know if I really believed what I was reading or if that PS RAM was going to be accessible program memory for Python. But why don't we start it up and take a look at it. And if we plug that one in, and get connected to it. Not sure I've ever caught the uh, boot screen like this before. Um, obviously dumps out some information, but let's go ahead and import PyDOS. And there we go. And sure enough, you can see from the prompt that we're talking about four meg of available memory. So when I was trying to run Adventure, I was struggling with about 180, 170. So if I had between 170 and 190 K of available memory, Adventure would run. I did find that even when I got it running, I couldn't play it for very long. I, I, after playing five or 10 minutes, if I only had you know, a couple hundred K of RAM available, the, the program would eventually run out of memory. But with four meg, you're basically good to go when running Adventure. This will start up. I'm not gonna go ahead and load the whole program, but uh, needless to say, uh, all the memory problems I was having with PyBasic and Adventure are resolved with this with the ESP32 chips when they have this uh, PS RAM. I guess it's external RAM that they add on with these boards. This one has four meg, which is uh, plenty for running BASIC in the applications that I'm using. I'll put an X out of that, and we'll take a look at the Wi-Fi functionality. And, and that failed. I, and it seems to fail sometimes on the first time when I start it up, but uh, obviously it's running there. I'm connecting out to the Adafruit site and uh, getting their text from them. This program doesn't use the Adafruit libraries, and it's not using, it's, it doesn't need to go through SPI, it just uses the MicroPython network library. So this just is a quick, uh, a very simple demonstration in MicroPython that it can go out and uh, connect to the Wi-Fi router and uh, grab some data off of the web. The flash chip that they're using does seem to me to be slower than the flash on other chips. 
Shortly after finding the tiny Pico, I stumbled across the Feather S2, also from Unexpected Maker. This chip actually has 8 megabytes of SPI RAM and 16 megabytes of flash storage, and it was in the Adafruit Feather format, which of course means that I could put it into the keyboard Feather Wing that I like so much. And that's actually um, the chip that I've, I've installed into this and, and pretty much use exclusively now. Um, if we turn this on, let's see if I can get the lighting to work right. And focus in on it. There we go. Sure enough, you can see I've got eight meg of RAM there. Eight, right? This flash feels much faster than the flash on the tiny uh, Pico. Um, so overall, I, I I really love this chip. And um, oh well, we can also demonstrate some of the. You know what? Let me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch the UI over to the terminal rather than the keyboard Featherwing, so it's easier to see. So I'm going to switch it to UART. All right. Yes. All right. Obviously, we got the 8 meg. Um, we've got almost 11 meg of flash available to PyDOS. We can do an I2C scan. Um, and then, since it's the ESP32 chips, we can do Wi Fi. We can just do Wi Fi, and this will run a set of tests. Wi Fi runs the basic Adafruit test against the Adafruit site. Um, let's see what else we've got here. I think there's a Wi Fi finance. And so what this one, this little program does is demonstrates parsing out using Python's text processing to uh, pull out the previous day or the current day's uh, change in NASDAQ price. So today we went up almost a percent on the NASDAQ, which is uh, nice for a change. We've had a couple of down days. And then Wi-Fi weather. This one actually uses uh, JSON to parse the National Weather API site to um, pull down the data, particular forecast I was looking for. So I've connected to the Feather S2 and loaded up PyDOS on it to show one of the other benefits of all this extra memory that the ESP32 S2 chips have. And that is, if we take a quick look at the folders on here, you'll see there's an S2 Pi Basic. And this is actually a branch on the Rich PL version of Pi Basic, which is designed to run on the, the full version of Python, not the microcontroller versions. So this version of Pi Basic doesn't have any of my memory enhancements that were required to get it to run under MicroPython and CircuitPython. The biggest enhancement was running the basic programs from Flash rather than loading them into memory. So in this version, Pi Basic loads an entire basic program into the RAM and then runs it from there. That obviously has a big speed advantage to it. Uh, but let's go ahead and down and uh, take a look at how that runs. So if we take a look in this folder, um, we'll see the program is started with the command interpreter because that's how Rich has his set up. And then I can load adventurefast to basic. Now, interestingly, this is called adventurefast, but this is the full command interpreter version of basic. So this is the original version as, in, as ported over from the 1980s basic version. And this version has a much more robust command interpreter one of the side effects of running basic programs with Flash is that they obviously run slower than running them from RAM, especially if the Flash isn't very fast. So the, I created a version of Adventure that had a much simpler command parser. So you, you could only put in two-word commands. And, and as you can see, right off the bat, the initialization dots run by the screen much quicker on this version. And once we get in, Uh, the prompt is much more responsive, um, so I can say go east, which is a simple command. That's the, the version that I simplified the command parser on um, would only take two-word commands. Uh, but with this version, you can actually say things like go to the east, and the command parser is smart enough to pull out the important words that it knows about, and that works fine. Another feature of this command, uh, command parser is that you can put in multiple commands uh, on a single line with a comma separating them.
ran both of those commands. So the, the main point of this is that Python programs that might not otherwise run on a microcontroller have a much better chance of running on one of these ESP32 S2 boards with all the extra RAM on them. In the process of getting PyDOS running on the ESP32, I ran into an issue with the recursion depth supported by CircuitPython. Eventually, I found a second parameter that resolved the issue. Running PyDOS on CircuitPython really requires you to build a custom firmware image with the PyStack parameter disabled. So enabling the, a second one, in this case, the MicroPython stackless parameter, didn't turn out to be any additional work. When I was running down the recursion depth issue, I contacted Adafruit through their forums, and Scott Shawcroft was one of the people that responded to my questions. Scott hosts a weekly deep dive with CircuitPython, and if you really want to know the underpinnings and inside workings of how CircuitPython works, check it out. I'll uh, have links to his most recent YouTube videos, as well as the GitHub site with all the software I'm demonstrating here in the description below. One of the things Scott suggested was that I take a look at the supervisor set next code file as a mechanism for launching Python scripts from PyDOS. I played around with this for quite a bit and actually did come up with a wrapper that uses this technique to launch applications. Basically what it does is sets the program that will be loaded upon the next soft reboot of the microcontroller board. And in that way, you basically can launch a program without having the overhead of PyDOS itself running. This actually could be very useful in terms of running something like Adventure on a PyPico that doesn't have all this extra SPI RAM. The downside is that you are doing a soft reboot of the board in between executions of files. So there's some extra output as the controller board reboots. And you do lose PyDOS environment variables when the machine comes back to PyDOS. The other big disadvantage is that, as far as I know, there's no similar facility in MicroPython. So if I were to adopt this as a standard launching mechanism, I'd have to have two sections of code, one for CircuitPython and one for MicroPython. And I'm really not keen on adding more code at this point to PyDOS since memory has been an issue. So if we set up a standard Raspberry Pi Pico, I think this one's running MicroPython. This is the one that's running CircuitPython. So let's pull that off. And we'll turn this guy off. Let's see, do I have it on here first off? Yes, we do. Okay. So uh, basically the way this works is you type in run VM. And I can actually put in... So the path for the freedom I went on, and then I want to change the the start off. Let's just load in a lot of the, uh, I think I have the PGM version on here. We'll find out. So you see there's the extra display. Uh, but it starts up, lines up pretty nicely. And then we'll just say goodbye to her. And if we exit, it'll come back and uh, boot. And, and bring me back to PyDOS. So it, it's a pretty slick way of um, getting squeezing some extra memory out of a PyDOS program. I also ordered a ESP32 S3 dev board, which I've been trying to get a copy of CircuitPython or MicroPython working on, so I can see how PyDOS runs on it. As Lady Ada would say, this is a real chonky board. It does have two USB ports, so I'm kind of interested in seeing how they work. I'll leave you with a bit of video of me testing a couple boards, updating the GitHub site with some with a new version of PyDOS. I think that covers most of the ESP32 S2 information I wanted to update you with. There are still a few more things I'd like to work on with PyDOS. I'd like to enhance the UI abstraction layer to better support the keyboard featherwing display. The display on it actually is a full-color touchscreen, so it'd be nice to take advantage of that. I also thought it would be nice to write an FTP client, or at least a Kermit-style terminal emulator, so I could wirelessly transfer files to Wi-Fi-enabled microcontroller boards. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.